everybody, it's Kelly. Happy Saturday, August 28th, 2021. And I'm here to do From Shirley's Cottage with you um, at this moment. <laughs> After I get done here, I'm gonna um, turn my chair around and go to the sewing machine and do a, a Black Thread Studio. So once we're done with this, if you wanna check back later and see what we're doing today in Black Thread Studio. So if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. And if you're not familiar with From Shirley's Cottage, Shirley is my mom. She's uh, 84, she turned 84 in July. And <clears throat> among other things, after she retired, she wrote a column for the Cambridge newspaper, Cambridge, Wisconsin, the hometown newspaper. And it was kind of, it was just kind of a tidbit, stories, mostly about family or friends. And then she always, um, as I like to say very gracefully, attaches a recipe that might make sense or might not um, to go along with the story. So um, I always think it's fun too on the Saturdays that I'm headed to get my mom. I have her every third weekend and um, I always think it's fun to read them when I know that I'm headed to go get her and have her for the weekend. So it is this weekend. Okay, so um, a little bit ago now, like a month and a half ago or so, um, on the prompting from you guys, we did a journal. This is my journal that I did to keep all my Shirley recipes in. Uh, Shirley and Teske, my mom, that's the back. And um, so that's my journal. And as I read these, I am sticking them in my little junk journal here. So if you are keeping track, um, I'll give you a second here to get a, a pencil and paper and we'll do today's From Shirley's Cottage. This one is from Thursday, August 13th, 2009. And this one is called Old and Broken But Not Forgotten. Here we go. Ted and Bill stopped by the office one day to show us an old oil lantern that Bill had picked up at a flea market. It hooked up to the side of a horse and buggy and reflected a white light in front and red in the back. At lunchtime, we started talking about some of the old things we have or had and found about a nine inch high bronze stat statue of a sailor at Goodwill. It was signed on the back. She paid $1.49. She researched what she could, found the artist as Stanley Blyfield and wanted to know if it was real, real bronze. Blyfield wrote her back, but didn't give any history except to say it was bronze casting. On eBay, one sold for $66. She had quite a bargain, but since it isn't priceless, the enjoyment is better than the 66 bucks. Amy had a circle of friends candle holder. It wasn't that old or expensive, but very cherished. It was a gift from her mom. One day it was missing and she asked her boyfriend if he knew where it was. The look on his face told the story. So long, circle of friends, you are but a sweet memory. I still have Chinaman. <laughs> I was wondering, Mom, if you're going to bring up the Chinaman. I still have the Chinaman. One of the kids called him that, and it stuck. I bought him many years ago when Ava Ruxton had her perpetual garage sale. Oh, if I can interject. <coughs> Excuse me. So at the lake, on the lake road, I have taken you guys on this ride before. Um, from my mom down to... Ava's, I think it was there and back was a mile, maybe. So that was our big thing was um, she had a rummage sale in her house and it was always open. So that was our thing was to gather our little change and walk down to Ruxton's. And I mean, she had everything. And um, I mean, it went for years and years and years <coughs> until she couldn't do it anymore. And then her daughter-in-law took over but the house, someday, oh, I don't know if I have pictures of it. Her grandson now has the house and is remodeling it, but it was a really big, cool, old white house with these big white column pillars out front. Um, it would just, I always thought that I was gonna own that house one day. And when it went up for sale, <laughs> I cried like a baby. Anyway, 
it stayed in the family and her grandson's doing it. But anyway, we would walk down to Roxton, so this is a really good memory. Okay, I will do this paragraph again. I still have Chine Man. Um, he costs $3, and I remember so well digging for change because the kids had already done their shopping at Ava's. Some years later, I wanted to find out more about him. Inside, he looked like sand, and the word sandstone was scratched um, near the bottom. He is painted so delicate, delicately, he looks like Dresden. I was told at the time he was worth several hundred dollars. <laughs> when Ted and his buddy Mark were in high school, they were playing football in the living room. Playing ball inside was a no-no, but when mom was at work, obviously the game must go on. Of course, the football hit the mantle of the fireplace where he was sitting. He was glued together with such perfection, I never noticed. One of his sisters who kept the secret told me many years later, I actually believe, I actually believe that my dad was home and knew and also kept that secret just to put that in there. I don't know what he would be worth today and I don't want to know. The boys are too old to be put up for adoption. <laughs> Last 4th of July, I was going to make a punch bowl dessert. I asked Deb if she had a punch bowl. She said, I used to, almost. I had totally forgotten what happened in the punch bowl she had almost had. I had told Deb she could have my grandma's crystal punch bowl. I took it to a potluck we had at beauty, beauty school. The bowl wasn't as lucky as Chinaman. It couldn't be put back together again. Whenever I go to St. Vincent's or Goodwill, I still look for a crystal bowl to give my kid. My most cherished recipes are the ones of my mom's written in her handwriting, priceless. This week I, need a sprig, this week I needed a sprig of dill for a recipe. I had to buy the whole darn bunch. I have enough dill for a whole lot of pickles. Okay, so this was written uh, middle of August, 2009. So, um, I think this is still pertinent to this time where um, do you make your own pickles? Does that sound good? Okay, Graham's sweet slash dill refrigerator pickles and then she put circa 1930s. You will need two quarts of sliced cucumbers, three sliced onions, one and a half cups of sugar, one and a half to two cups of sugar, two cups of vinegar, two and a half tablespoons of pickling salt, one teaspoon of dill seed, one teaspoon of celery seed, and three to four heads fresh dill. Is anybody writing these down? Did I do that too fast? Two quarts sliced cucumbers, three sliced onions, one and a half to two cups of sugar, two cups vinegar, two and a half tablespoons of pickling salt, one teaspoon of dill seed, one teaspoon of celery seed, and three to, three to four heads of fresh dill. Okay, soak cucumbers and onions in cold salt water for one hour. Drain. Stir the rest of the ingredients and pour over the cucumbers and onions. Refrigerate for three days. Put in small containers, eat cold, and enjoy. Okay, so um, like two or three Christmases ago now, Mom, we, um, we pitched in and got her one of those big um, stoneware, pickling stoneware pots. And because the one she had that she really used for um, pickles was cracked. So we bought her a new old one. And I haven't seen pickles made in that crock since we got it for you, Mom. So that might be on a to-do list for you. Graham Sweet Dill Refrigerator Pickles. Mm, mm, mm. That sounds so good. So what kind of treasures do you guys have? Um, I do know, well, our whole family was collectors and my mom has had articles before about my brother and my sister cleaning out the cottage and throwing things away. But, oh gosh, I was probably maybe five or six and I remember this so well. My grandma and grandpa had well, for Christmas, we would get to go down in their basement and kind of pick something. They had all these really cool old antiques and stuff and pick something. Um, oh, should I grab? 
Okay, went to go grab what I picked from her basement one year, which was one of those wooden boxes that had the three little, um, kind of little decoupage um, old sceneries on the top. Um, anyway, they had all kinds of stuff. And I know when I was little, I think before the things were in their basement, anyway, they had things in a shed that my grandpa rented up at the cottage. And uh, we had an old guy that would come and mow the lawn, Elmer. And I don't remember the exact details, but all I remember is that everything out of that shed was gone. And my memory serves me right. I think Elmer took everything. So I'm sure along the way, even, even as I've moved and gotten rid of things, um, you know, that happens. But think two, three, four, ten times before you get rid of something if you are a collector, just to make sure that, uh, and don't put it on the fireplace mantle where it can get broken. I guess that's the moral of the story. So, okay, that is from Shirley's Cottage today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and have a beautiful Saturday. And I'm going to get stitching and go get Shirley. So have a good weekend and I will see you next weekend with another installment of From Shirley's Cottage. Bye-bye.